As ambassador, you don't want to repeat yourself too much. And I don't want to repeat anything that I said last time I met the board or anything I said at the various Independence Day functions. And I was thinking, what can I say this morning that I haven't said? What can I say this morning uh, uh, that is new? And I was, you know, perturbed. One doesn't want to be a parrot repeating oneself over and over again. And this morning on my way here, I was going through my Twitter feed. I'm addicted, I admit it. Maybe some of you are as well. And I saw that there are groups this morning in the United Kingdom who are celebrating what they call Nakba Day. Now, Nakba is a, a, an Arabic word for catastrophe. We Jews, we celebrated this week Independence Day, Israel's 68th anniversary of our independence. And we celebrate that in a very real way because I think all of us can think for a moment what it would be like without a state of Israel. Where would Jews be today without a state of Israel? What happened to the Jewish people before there was a state of Israel? And so I think Jews across the board unite in celebrating our reclaimed sovereignty and independence. But those people today who are commemorating the so-called Nakba Day, I asked them the following question. Why aren't you two celebrating 68 years of independence? Why is the Palestinian state not celebrating 68 years of independence as Israel is celebrating? And they never want to answer that question. But that is the historic fact. The UN partition proposal, UNSCOP, said two states for two peoples, a Palestinian state for the Palestinian people and a Jewish state for the Jewish people. And maybe some of you have seen the old black and white newsreels of people in Tel Aviv sitting next to their radios, there weren't televisions back there in 1947, and listening to the UN vote and the name, the list of countries being read out and one by one, the Jews marking it off. And when we got a two-thirds majority, there was spontaneous celebration in Tel Aviv. People went out and danced the horror. It was an amazing victory. We embraced the UN partition proposal. We said yes to a Jewish state, even though we knew it would be a small Jewish state. Even though we knew the Jewish state's future was precarious, we celebrated the fact that the international community had given us sovereignty in part of our historic homeland. We didn't reject that resolution. We embraced the two states for two peoples concept. What did the Palestinians do? What was the response of Palestinian political leadership? They said no. They said all or nothing. They said no to a Jewish state, not in any borders. They said no to the establishment of a Palestinian state because it meant reconciling themselves in parallel to their being a Jewish state as their neighbor. They said all or nothing and they ended up getting nothing. So who is to blame for the fact that we don't celebrate today together? Who is to blame for the fact that the Palestinians do not have a state of their own? Is it Israel? Is it the Zionists who said yes to two states for two peoples? And unfortunately, this wasn't a one-off event. Over the last decades, the Palestinians have been on numerous occasions, offered sovereignty and independence, offered a state of their own. It goes back before the UN partition proposals. The Palestinians were offered a, fate, a state first time by the British in 1937, the Peel Commission. They said no then. They said no in 47. They said no at Camp David again in 2000, and they said no again in 2008. Their problem has been that they've refused to accept a Palestinian state if it means they have to live in peace and accept the legitimacy of a Jewish state. And anyone who really wants to understand this conflict in the Middle East, 
The fundamental key to understanding the conflict has to be this consistent factor that unfortunately, until today, Palestinians refuse to reconcile themselves to our right to live in sovereignty in any part of our historic homeland. They refuse to accept the legitimacy of the Jewish state in any borders. And I fail to understand how we can get peace without that. <clears throat> in fact, peace is impossible without that. The same Palestinians that go around the world and say you have to accept Palestinian right to national self-determination, that the Palestinians have a right to a state, why do they refuse to accept our right to national self-determination? Why do they reject the Jewish people's right to national self-determination in part of our historic homeland? Now, as much as I know that Palestinian acceptance of the Jewish people's right to national self-determination is essential and a key element in any future peace agreement. I want you to know something, and the Prime Minister repeated it on Independence Day this week. We make no preconditions whatsoever on entering peace talks. Obviously, our position is that if there is to be a peace agreement, the Palestinians have to recognize our right, the Jewish people's right, to national self-determination. But we don't make that a precondition for entering peace talks. On the contrary, Prime Minister Netanyahu reiterated this week, we are willing to start peace talks immediately with the Palestinian leadership without any preconditions whatsoever, anywhere, anytime. We want peace. We believe peace is, is ultimately in our benefit as it's in their benefit. And the only way to achieve that peace is in direct talks where the Palestinians will put on the table what concerns them and we'll put on the table what concerns us. That's the only way forward. And from our point of view, we need to hear for there to be an agreement. We need to finally hear from the Palestinians that they are willing to accept our legitimacy. Our legitimacy as a Jewish state, as a state, the only state where the Jewish people have national self-determination. I think I'll finish with those remarks. I thank you all.